think because the water is so calm here at Pompano, uh, there are all these little fishes that are gathering around my feet and my ankles. I don't know, maybe they think I'm like a little coral reef uh, sheltering them from the uh, ebbs and flows of the waves, but it tickles, definitely tickles. When you come in on Atlantic Avenue, you could go straight at A1A and park at this lot, but if you take a right, and then you go down to the very first left, then you'll find what I'm calling my secret spot, which is the Patel lot. So every time I come, this lot is always pretty much empty, even on the weekend. It's like the secret space. So let's check it out. It's on Southeast 2nd Street, and you enter here through these signs. Whoops. <laughs> and usually wide open so previously it was about 30 cents cheaper than the city lot for hours uh, we'll see today if that's also the case this lot is located near southeast second street and briny avenue it's not a city lot it's owned by uh, probably the patel family because it goes called the patel lot on the app but it's right across the street from the second street entrance to the beach super easy and every time I come, this lot always has parking. If you like wave action, like boogie boarding or surfing, as you can see, these six inch waves probably won't do it for you. Or paddle boarding, like this lady right here. See, getting up from seating like that, that just takes a lot of, a lot of skill and you need something nice and calm like this, so. I just doing pretty good. end of the pier is really popular for fishing. Uh, they even have like tables so you can cut, it says bait cutting so I guess don't clean your whole fish here. Um, we've got, oh he just brought up a big one. If you see a, ooh, if you see a manta ray, I guess don't catch it. And the other thing you might see are these guys here interested in a snack, but not, not quite so scared of me. He must like people. No, oh, he's just hanging out. Hey there, buddy. No food for you. One really fun part about the pier is the people watching. You can just sit and like watch people as they're fishing, see if they catch anything. Just saw um, a father-son pair where he was teaching his kid how to fish and teaching him about how to be patient. Maybe that's why I never could do fishing. <laughs> First things first, gotta set up our stuff. And now you have it, we have shade. Pompano Beach uh, got its name when its residents started flocking in at the beginning of the 1900s. And uh, somebody ate a fish, I guess a Pompano fish, and thought it was delicious and decided to call the area Pompano. Um, and it's been known for its fishing and its live coral reef. There's a live coral reef, uh, lots of boats out there to fish. And then it has a 1,000 foot long pier for people to go out and fish. And um, so this place centrally located between uh, Miami and West Palm um, is a pretty big hub for the SoFlo beaches. And if you come here, you can just walk forever north, walk forever south. The water here at Pompano is so clear. Now, granted, we're dealing with some seaweed this time of year, but the good news is that if you feel something flutter next to your ankle, you don't have to worry about what it is. You can just look straight down and see it yourself. 
looks like today we've got some good conditions. Green flag, that's always positive. I guess the other color flags you don't want. And the high tide is 219, so we're pretty much here as high tide is going away. Low tide was at 8 a.m. And that's a pretty big air fluctuation. That water temperature, yeah. That's like approaching bath water temperatures. One thing you should think about when coming to a SoFlo beach and looking ahead at the weather is the temperature outside is not the same as the real feel. So right now it's 87 degrees, but the real feel, I kid you not, is exactly 100. Woo! If you're on the south side of the pier, right where Atlantic Avenue comes to the beach, and say you're hungry and you want a snack, you're in the perfect spot for Sandbar Snacks. So Sandbar Snacks is a quick service. They have sandwiches, they have salads, uh, they have coffee. I don't know about hot, hot coffee during the summer, but the one thing is they are closed on Wednesdays. Um, let's check out the menu here. Yeah, we've got like regular like sodas and chips and things like that, but if you do actually want something a little heartier, got some sandwiches, burgers, coffee is promised. They're open pretty late, that's nice. But the thing that I find really cool is there is a little library. So if you forgot your book, you can come. I think the idea is you just need a book, take one, have a book, leave one, maybe pick it up for the day, return it. Nice. Hey, there are bicycles for rent. Looks like it's $5 for every 30 minutes and you can choose your bicycle. It comes with a little basket. Oh, it's an electric bike. Oh yeah, that makes pedaling a lot easier. And they even have a map here of all the different places that you might be able to bicycle to and from. That's a pretty cool alternative activity. ridden like 11 miles so far. <laughs> it's hot and we got hungry. <clears throat> so we stopped off at this pier in Lauderdale by the sea that has a restaurant that has Greek food and it's amazing. And as I'm eating and enjoying it, I was just like staring off into space and I wasn't even paying attention <laughs> to what Remy was saying. But let me share this view with you. really nice to be able to be so close and just pop in here like this. So if you come down to SoFlo as they call it and you want to go to Pompano, that's the Pompano Pier down there and it's free and then if you want to bike ride all the way down to Lauderdale by the sea, that pier actually you have to go to pay two dollars to get out on that pier. Um, I think it's privately owned perhaps. We're still in Pompano, we're just on the other side of the bridge, on the other side of the Intercoastal Waterway. And there's a boat launch over here on Northeast 14th Street, which is free parking. You can come fish, you can picnic, watch the boats go by. There's even a little kiddie park. This little inlet from the Intercoastal is 
a fine place for fishing and for dry dock watching and to ooh and ah at these gigantic boats. I wonder how much do those cost? But you can walk pretty far down, admire the other boats, admire um, all the things going on and see all the people fishing and see if they catch anything. Ironically, all these people are fishing, but there's a sign that says no fishing from the docks. Oh no, wait, right so there. I wonder, is fishing, like, can you get a ticket? I don't know. I guess it just matters if someone comes to find out. 